Once upon a time, the Nissan Pathfinder was considered one of the more rugged trucks, SUVs you could buy. I mean, at least the first three generations were body on frame, four by four trucks. I mean, they were considered right up there with the Toyota 4Runner, for example. But Nissan had different plans, right? Sometime around the fourth generation, and I assume in the late 20, 2000s, I should say, they figured, well, we have the Nissan Xterra so we can evolve or have the Pathfinder evolve into a more family-friendly SUV. And although sales were pretty damn good, something happened. It wasn't a Pathfinder anymore. It was, oh, I don't know how to put it nicely, kind of a jelly bean on four wheels that kind of did some things right and some things. It had a CVT, okay? It just kind of ruined the whole idea. And I have to believe that Nissan also believed that because this all new fifth generation Nissan Pathfinder is essentially it kind of crushes or I, I'm thinking Nissan would like this SUV to crush the previous generation which was introduced in 2012 and we could just forget about that SUV because this now five and a half days into driving it is the Pathfinder that I remember and love. I've driven every generation of the Pathfinder, including the 80s at one point. I was given the opportunity to take one for a spin. And well, that was essentially like a Wrangler, well, poorly built Wrangler. Maybe <laughs> No, that's not right. The point is the Pathfinder is back. It does everything the previous generation truck did, which is haul a lot of stuff and a lot of people. And now it drives and it actually performs really, really well. Uh, if you can't tell now already, I kind of really, really like the new 22 Pathfinder. So in the following video, as per the norm, we're going to do a little lap or five around the truck and then take it for a spin. Okay, so the 2022 Nissan Pathfinder is the latest, well, I guess, evolution of Nissan's SUV design. And to be quite honest, it's uh, it's really not offensive. Now, as I say that, I'm trying to realize if that's an insult or a compliment. Um, well, here we go. I think it actually looks really, really good. Now, this is a platinum version, so it's got a few extra visual highlights, including the 20-inch wheels. Um, but look, as I do a lap, I mean, the proportions are really good. The windshield seems very, very raked towards the back. The roof line kind of sweeps away towards the rear. Uh, this is a very substantial, very handsome SUV. Far, far better than the, well, I forget what I call it, what an egg or something like that from the previous generation. And um, I love Pathfinder, just written in huge letters across the back. I mean, it, it, the Pathfinder is back, as I kind of mentioned, so might as well show it off and tell all your friends. Okay, so uh, let's talk pricing. Uh, one important thing, distinction between US and Canada is that all-wheel drive is an option on all of the trims, which explains why the base S two-wheel drive is $33,680 and at the other end of the spectrum, the platinum all-wheel drive is $48,440. Now in Canada, $43,998 for the base S and this platinum all-wheel drive is $54,598. As far as equipment is concerned in the base truck, you get an eight inch display, seven inch digital instrument display, 18 inch wheels. It's an eight passenger configuration, power driver seat, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, ProPilot Assist, and so on and so forth. So you get a fair amount of kit for the base model. When you step up to this one, however, um, yeah, you get a 12.3 inch uh, digital IP, a nine inch uh, touchscreen display, which is available, I think, from the SL up. Heads up display, the aforementioned 20s, quilted semi aniline leather, heated cooled seats in the front, uh, heated steering wheel, and the Platinum it has uh, second row captain seats for seven seating configuration. Um, obviously, power hatch um, is included, and it's a three row SUV. I got this, I know how these buttons work. At least I thought I did. There we go. Told you I knew how. Okay, so with the third row up, you're looking at about 470 liters of trunk space, which is still fairly usable. Um, there isn't, you know, I mean, well, I was going to say there isn't that much, but in fact, uh, it's a fairly good size bin under the floor. And this sounds really big on accessories right now, and it's working out kind of nice. Um, as a note, I'll try and show you from the other way, but uh, getting back here and using the third row seat is actually pretty good. Now, it might not be as spacious. Oh, 
with the third row down, 1,274 liters. So it's an extra 800 liters when you put the uh, third row down. It works out. Now, yeah, back to the third row. It's actually really usable. I mean, more so than I recall uh, for the Highlander and probably about as big or accessible or easy to use as the one in the Atlas. Now, obviously, the kids' seats are in place, so I can't tilt the seat forward, but you kind of get a sense that uh, the phone won't focus on the right area. There we go. Um, your knees won't be in your face. I'm sorry about the shot, but yeah, it it's a decent third row and it's a really, really good second row. Uh, there's a center console because it's a platinum with the captain's seats, loads of space, little touches like this that I love. Now, as far as storage is concerned in this vehicle, there is tons of it. Dual cup holders, I don't know, this, they're so deep they can serve all kinds of stuff. Even the handle is really good, door bins. Uh, and then, well, see, nice little touches, I suppose. Huh? That's pretty cool. Show it off. Tell everyone you have a Pathfinder because the Pathfinder is back. All right, so um, it, it, I think I might mention this again. What Nissan has done, I've always said that Nissan makes good average products, but the Pathfinder is like average plus, which means that it's really, really good. Um, fit finish materials i mean everything looks really good it's well assembled it's not uber luxurious obviously that's the qx60's job but still fifty-five thousand dollars. i don't know there's there's a sense that there's stuff going on here and look semi-aniline seats uh, power lumbar i think it's a 12-way setup versus the 10 in the base model that slide aboard so there's your 12.3 inch ip turn down the music nine inch display there I mean, everything is exactly where it's supposed to be i love you know how all the hvac controls are right there easily accessible um and here's one thing i love about the nissan product look how thin the spokes are so you actually have excellent grip when driving you can wrap your thumb around the spoke i love that it, it's a stupid detail but it really i think is important uh heated cold seats like i said storage 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 is storage here and there's even a nice bin down here which i absolutely love you know on the inside the only thing that i can find that is kind of iffy is this the shifter um these electronic shifters i mean this one has a reasonable amount of resistance to it but i can't tell you how often i've tried to go from reverse to drive and it just wouldn't go even when pressing the button as i'm supposed to Maybe it's just me getting used to it, but I've driven a few Nissans with this already. It's a stupid detail. Let's leave it at that. But what's an, uh, a really important detail is, well, there's a nice little slot there. I love those. Is visibility is excellent. I mean, when you're up here, you have a commanding view as you would in an SUV, but contrary, say, to the Atlas, this little opening is a lifesaver. Despite the fact that the base of the pillar is really big, look how low the mirror is mounted. So you can actually go around a cement divider or median and you can follow it with your eyes as... Anyhow, it, the visibility is excellent in here. The space is excellent. Uh, the fit and finish is really, really nice, especially in this Platinum Edition. And the drive, well, the drive is really, really good. So uh, let's do that. Once again, weird shifter, and I'll just have to get used to it. Um, and it'll be easy, really, because the 2022 Pathfinder is um, well, just absolutely another absolute. So many absolutes in this vehicle. It's just really, really good. And the main reason for that is, is quite simple. I mean, this is all new, new platform and everything. And these new uh, technologically advanced, highly rigid and stiff platforms just enable engineers to build vehicles that are more comfortable, better handling and all that. Um, but the thing is, with the Pathfinder, it's kind of a mix between a little bit of new, a little bit of old, and it really, really works. I mean... Um, as far as the old is concerned, well, you know, the 3.5 liter V6 uh, is back, but there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, on paper, it has 284 horsepower and uh, 259 pound-feet of torque at 4,800 RPM, which for a considerably large mid-size SUV is, is enough. Enough is the right word. Um, 
But the trick, the new, the, the lifesaver, the element that redefines or crushes the previous generation uh, Pathfinder is the new 9-speed automatic transmission. And it's it just enables the V6 to behave in a way that you probably don't necessarily expect in a vehicle like this. And again, I think this might have to do with the fact that I remember the CVT in the previous generation Pathfinder, and it was just horrible. I mean, look, it's not complicated. The 9A, a 9-speed automatic transmission, suddenly delivers a sense of robustness, of realness, of capability, of seriousness that an SUV like this could never expect to have with a CVT transmission, although there is at least one out there that still has that transmission. Um, as far as the powertrain is concerned, the only downside is throttle response in normal drive mode is you know it's a little slow it's very laggy in fact and i'm pretty sure that has to do with nissan's hope that uh, fuel consumption numbers won't be catastrophic on average nissan says you can hope to get maybe 10 and a half liters per 100 kilometers but uh, in the real world in reality yeah, yeah i saw it if you manage between 12 and 12 and a half uh, you're a very good highly efficient driver you can always fix that kind of and now i'm getting into traffic obviously by putting it in dynamic mode or sport mode um, it does kind of sharpen up throttle response a little bit but there's still uh, an inherent built-in lagginess i mean yeah it, it's a little bit peppier or punchier i should say but it doesn't make much of a difference what's really important and i'm back on the nine speed automatic transmission is that it's so smooth it glides from gear to gear. There's never anything going on that you don't want with it. Um, it's it's really good. It's absolutely really, really good. Now, as far as the driving experience itself is concerned, uh, this new platform uh, holds a fully independent suspension. Oh, something's ugly up ahead. And, okay, I know it looks really bad on the phone, but in, in here, it's really really nice so it's a fully independent suspension multi-link setup in the back and look the level of refinement in this suv is up there with almost every other suv in the segment it's at least above average which is high praise indeed as far as i'm concerned um and i mean look it, it might be a half a notch below being truly really comfortable uh, but that probably has more to do with the 20-inch wheels than anything else. So I can only imagine that a base truck with the 18s is borderline plush. Is that even possible? But it's it's really... I'm. I, there's so many good things, as I've said, about the way this vehicle drives. Um, steering is nice. I mean, to be quite honest, brakes feel a little... Well, kind of like throttle throttle response it's kind of laggy somewhat but in both cases it's just something you have to work around and it becomes part and parcel of your your habits the way you drive your vehicle now the road is completely destroyed that's why the phone's moving so much but i am reasonably if not really comfortable in here and it's decently quiet steering is fine i mean look it's it's all praise I mean, it's it's essentially all praise, and I'm I'm not looking at this with rose-colored glasses and, and exaggerating anything. In fact, in the past, I've been maybe a little too harsh with Nissan. No, I haven't been too harsh with Nissan, because I always thought that they just made average vehicles, which is probably which explains why they are so pop. Oh, I think these are train tracks right here. Always an interesting test. Um, uh, see, not that bad, not that bad. Um, but the new Pathfinder is still that average, but average plus, which is a huge thing as far as I'm concerned, which is why this thing is so good. I mean, in this segment, yes, I'm a big fan of the Dodge Durango, which is kind of silly and old, but 
I would take this before an explorer, before an atlas, before a palisade, before a telluride. It would be right up there. I'd take it before a pilot. Um, it would be right up there with uh, the Mazda CX-9, which I know isn't perfect, but still I really like it. The Subaru Ascent, which is the other one with the CVT, or I think now the last one with the CVT. Um, and the Toyota Highlander, which I still believe is one of the top choices in the segment. Um, if you stretch it a little bit, yeah, the Grand Cherokee L is nice, but it's really, really pricey compared to these vehicles. I think I've covered them all. So, I mean, I just want to say that it's, it's definitely in my top five. Makes the top four. And, um, yeah, I take it before a Traverse, an Enclave and all that too. It, it's nudging against the top three with the, with the Ascent CX-9 and the Highlander. It might move one of the others. Anyway, this thing is, it's, uh, it's just out of nowhere really, really good. That's it.